Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome to another episode of Cornerstone Quick Tips. My name is Josh Donnelly, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to create a nifty little blog archive page like this that includes a nice featured article for our latest article up top, and then properly includes an offset for all of the articles that fall below that. And I'm sure we've all seen some sort of layout similar to this here. So how do we create that in Cornerstone? Well, the great news is you can do it all natively. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are in the Cornerstone Builder, and as you can see, we are looking at the layout for the design we were just looking at on the front end. But I'm gonna go ahead, come in here, and delete this whole thing. Now, we're not gonna worry too much about styling. We're gonna focus more on how this actually works. So let's take a look at that now. We're gonna go ahead and start from scratch. We know we want our latest article to be a featured article up top, and then all of the other articles to fall nicely underneath that. So we know that we need two rows. So we're gonna do a top row. This is going to be for our featured article. And then we are going to do a bottom row. And this one is going to be for all of our standard articles. So let's focus on the featured article first and foremost. I'm going to use a setup like this just to get the design looking very similar to what we had in the example. I'm gonna give it some rounded edges where we'll have our featured image. I'm not doing all of this image sizing properly because I'm trying to move quickly here, but we'll give it a size of like 350 pixels. And then we'll turn on our advanced and come into our image element and set this to featured. Now right away it's consuming something so that is good. Now let's dive into our elements here, grab a headline and we want this first headline to be a span. We will set this to our publish date and add that in here as dynamic content. We'll go ahead and grab another headline and this headline can be our H2 for each of the articles and this will be the post title. So we'll type in post title. Now let's go ahead and just make that title a little bit larger, more substantial and maybe bold. So it looks something like this here. And then we'll go ahead and add in an excerpt for our articles as well. And a nifty little trick in the excerpts here, we can open this up. And for the sake of this example, I want some fallback text of lorem ipsum, but then check this out. We can come right in here and we can type in length equals quote, and we'll do something like 25. And you'll notice it slims things down on the right hand side over here. And then maybe I just add dot, 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 something like that. So it always looks like it continues on. And that's looking pretty good for our use case here. Maybe on the headline here, we just add a little bit more top and bottom margin just to separate things out a little bit. Now, what we're gonna do is click on this row and we're gonna go ahead and add some bottom margin to separate it out a little bit. Let's do four M's just to give it some space between our regular articles down below. And then we're gonna do a three by, so we'll go with columns here. And in these columns, we are going to add a div up top. And you could use the aspect ratio div that we did before in one of the previous videos, but I'm simply gonna come in here, add our featured image as the content here. And we'll give this a minimum height of 300 pixels. So it looks something like that. And just to match our featured article, we'll give it a border radius of one. Now, just to speed things along, I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate our publish date, duplicate our title, and duplicate our excerpt here. With all of that done, I'm simply gonna come down to my featured image here, add just a little bit of bottom margin to separate out from the text. And then what we're gonna do right here inside the column is just drag down our additional headline, drag down our additional excerpt and drag down our additional publish date. And now that's looking pretty good. Now, as you guys may or may not know, when you're working on an archive layout, you do not need to use a looper provider because by nature, there is a default provider provided by WordPress to archives. So the provider is already happening behind the scenes and you don't need to set that piece up. In fact, setting it up could make things act a little wonky and then pagination doesn't work. So we want to be careful how we are customizing the provider on the page. If you do need to customize the looper provider and change the way it is providing content to your page, then you'll need to do that in the PHP, which is something that we can take a look at in a separate video. But to continue on with what we're doing here, since we don't need to set up the looper provider, we're going to go ahead and go right into consuming. So I'm going to jump down to this column one here. I'm going to come up to customize and I'm going to click consume. Again, no provider necessary, and now it's consuming all of our articles. But we wanna make sure that this featured part is set properly as well. So we're gonna click on the row for this featured article. 
We're gonna come up to customize and we're gonna set a consumer on this one as well. And right away, you'll notice it also is consuming all of our articles, but we just want one featured article for our latest post. So we are going to say consume one item. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice that things are looking good, but we have two Article 7s showing here. And that's simply because we need to refresh how Cornerstone is consuming the content. So we're gonna go ahead and save this here and then refresh the page to get the latest from the Looper provider. And you'll notice immediately things are formatting nicely here. We have Article 7 up top, Article 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now let's say we did for some reason want our featured article to be consumed again. So we want it to say article seven here, but we also do want that repeated in our consumer below. That's easy enough to achieve natively in Cornerstone as well. All we have to do is select the container that has our consumer on it for that featured article. We'll come up to customize and you'll notice we have this rewind and that allows the consumer to be rewound and then we'll consume article seven below here as well. So let's go ahead and save. We're gonna completely refresh the page here and now you'll notice that we have article seven in our featured area up top and then article seven repeated in the area below. But let's go ahead and set that back to our standard intention here, which is without the rewind enabled, we'll go ahead and save and we will refresh. And the nice thing about all of this is that it just works flawlessly. So now if we go ahead and we jump into the back end of our site and we jump into posts and we create a new post for article eight, we'll come in here and we'll type article eight. We'll give it a featured image and we'll just grab one of these random ones here, click set featured image and we'll click publish. And as soon as we do that, let's jump back to our front end here. We'll refresh with our new design and right away, there's article eight in the featured spot and it automatically bumped article seven down into the area below. Now, the great thing about this is that if we have pagination on this page, everything still works as well. So let's go ahead and enable some pagination on this layout here. Now, you may be wondering how it decided how many articles to consume here. As you'll notice, we have eight articles here right now. Where is that number of consumers coming from? Well, it's actually from the default global that you have set up in WordPress. So let's jump into the back end here, jump back into WordPress go down to settings, go into reading, and under reading, you'll notice that our blog pages to show is set to 10. If I were to set this to four, save that change, and then jump back into our blog here and refresh, you'll notice that we have eight, seven, six, five, and nothing else below that. So it's automatically basing that off of our global set in WordPress. So back here in Cornerstone, we wanna add some pagination. First and foremost, I'm gonna get rid of these empty columns just so that they don't mess with my design. These were just set up when we set up the row, so there we go. Now, if you didn't want your articles to grow like Article 5 is doing here, we simply select the row and we scroll down to where it says column fill grow, which is the default, and we're gonna set that to auto. So now things are looking pretty good here. Now, right below our articles is where we want our pagination. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna hold down the command or control key, and I'm gonna click add element, and I'm gonna type in pagination. We'll go ahead and add that right here. I want a little bit of margin on that, so we'll go ahead and maybe add four M's of margin so it bumps it down, and I want that to be centered. Now, we're not gonna worry about styling that right now, but we'll go ahead and save. Now, when we jump out to the front end, where, again, we only have four articles showing, but we know we have more articles than that, we'll go ahead and refresh, and now you'll notice we have four articles and we have our pagination here. Now, on this page, article four is automatically the one on top, and then three, two, and one. So again, everything formats appropriately. Now, we've been looking at this specifically in the context of blog posts, but obviously, this could be applied to any of your layouts that you guys are building. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building!